So, folks, I don't think this is a stretch to say that right now old Donnie's going through some things, and it's putting a lot of pressure on him and his movement and all of that, but upon him not just emotionally and intellectually, but also physically and in terms of his health. And there's a few developments we have to talk about. One, how he's extra unhinged today, even in comparison to the last couple days, but also how he is getting very sick looking sick and feeling sick about how all of this is coming down upon him. And we have some photos to examine that really demonstrate that as well as Donald Trump sitting at home watching prosecutors lay out how the next few days are going to be absolute hell for him before getting into what might be the most interesting thing here, which is Trump getting an absolutely miserable and devastating update from a doctor just hours before he's about to be arrested for the first time in his life. But let's start with the fact that Donald Trump at this moment is so unhinged that he's lashing out at just anyone. And at this moment, he's actually spending most of his time not really lashing out about brag even. Yeah, that's, there's some of that, but actually at Ron DeSantis. And it was so weird that Fox hosts were almost flabbergasted at Trump's strategy and his favorite name for the governor of Florida, Ron DeSanctimonious. He said we'll probably find out about false accusations and fake stories. Uh, going on to say, as he gets older, wiser, and better known, when he's unfairly or illegally attacked by a woman, uh, or even classmates that are underage, or possibly a man, and he continued, and he linked to this story oh, he's good linked Lord. to before. Yes, we remember this uh, photo of Governor DeSantis back when he was teaching. He spent a very short time teaching, and there's a you know th this photo that that uh, Trump put out there of him hanging out with some of the so students. So we're in a sh surreal place right now. Totally surreal. Really surreal. And uh, in the middle of this, you also have other cases that possibly could come to the fore. Uh, the case in Georgia that is also in the grand jury. Uh, you have the special counsel looking at not only the classified documents, but the handling of January 6th. There's a lot that's bubbling up at this moment. Uh, that like this is how unhinged it is, right? They're like, what is he doing? We live in some sort of bizarre world right now that he's spending his time attacking DeSantis. Now, DeSantis did poke at him a little bit, but by and large, DeSantis defended Trump, saying that, you know, this is unfair and all of this and all of that. But Trump world is losing it on DeSantis. And this is what's really interesting. And this is why Trump is dangerous. And this is uh, taps into the, the sickness of Trump and the medical stuff we're going to talk about and all of that, and the doctor stuff. But remember, Trump's insanity is contagious to his movement, and his movement is flipping out again. Less at Bragg today and more at DeSantis. With, and look, I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. <laughs> but what okay, I can speak okay, to... Okay, okay, that's, that's not, that's, that's not an acceptable, that's just not an acceptable response. John Fergus, give me, give me two minutes on that, brother. This is one of the most unbelievable, feckless, weasel, consultant-driven responses in a crisis you've ever heard. Look, here's the bottom line, Steve. Trying times are going to define men and women. And Ron DeSantis has hid for 72 hours since this thing broke. Finally, the pressure, his consultants are telling him, hey, your poll numbers are dropping. you got to make a statement. Look, he's got to choose. he got to choose between the gangster banksters in Wall Street, the biggest time hedge funders that are funding his campaign, the open borders, Koch brothers crowd, he's got to choose between them or us. There's no middle here. This is zero sum game. Finally, under pressure, he comes out. And what does he say? He says a bunch of weasel hobbledy gob words that what does it even mean? Oh, he's uh, Soros funded. Oh, this is a political circus. Oh, what about the fact that the former president of the United States is being arraigned, indicted, and arrested on charges that don't make any sense on basically a string of misdemeanors strung together. And here's what he doesn't get. Yeah. It's not about Trump. It's about it's about us, Steve, yeah. because today they, they do it to President yeah. Trump, right. tomorrow they do it to, yeah. to Steve Bannon, Wednesday yeah. they do it to me, and Thursday <laughs> they do it to DeSantis. Yeah. He's a total yeah. weasel, no, no, it's, it's, and it came yeah. out here. He said nothing. Yeah. Again, like, maybe the MAGAs feel like it's not worth it, or, or, or that he's not doing enough, or they understand that, you know, uh, regardless of this, Trump is still trying to run for president, and in the primaries, it's likely going to end up as a 
Trump versus DeSantis contest, although DeSantis hasn't declared yet. And, you know, things happen. Maybe one of them does, does really bad or, or you know, a, a star out of nowhere rises. Who knows? But it's likely, you know, Don versus Ron. And right now, that seems to be the biggest thing. And it shows the, the, the dysfunctional insanity the mental sickness of the Trump movement that even in this moment, they don't even know how to aim their shots correctly. All right, right. This is one of the reasons I have optimism. It's like they're spending their time circular firing at other Republicans when in reality, if they were smart, they would have message discipline and they don't. And here's one of the reasons it's because Trump is a paranoid mess right now. First, and we, we have to show you this first, a lot of people are noting that he looks terrible. Ron Filipkowski, one of the best you know, people that analyzes the far right and finds all of these things noted that Trump just took a picture like a day ago. This was yesterday. And he looks terrible. And as he noted, he says, not looking good today, sleepless nights, stress and rage posting isn't healthy. And so it's clearly taking a physical and mental toll on Trump. He looks worse there than he often does. He looks a bit pale. He looks exhausted. His face is like slouching. It, look, it looks awful. He's trying to put on a smile for the person he's taking a picture with, but can't get through it because beneath that is utter terror and rage and all of that. And it's because people are, are on to his BS. Prosecutors are noting how this is all going to go down. And they're noting that unlike last time, while there's still concerns, don't get me wrong, people are ready for the carnage he wants to cause. J6, uh, it shouldn't have been, but J6 caught people off guard. The NYPD won't be caught off guard. As far as we understand it, the grand jury meets on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if they were to vote on an indictment, decide an, an indictment, it would happen today or Wednesday or maybe Monday or Wednesday of next week. You talked about how it would be that the president was notified next and we wouldn't necessarily uh, be notified of it immediately. Is the expectation that, that we would find out from Donald Trump himself or from, from the DA's office in a few more days? We won't hear from the DA's office. A grand jury indictment where there's no arrest, which is what we have here, remains sealed until we go to court. So you will not find out anything from the DA's office. You might hear from Donald Trump himself. He typically likes to share information and misinformation, like like what he was saying uh, last week about uh, there's going to be an arrest on Tuesday. We know that's not true, yet he said it anyway. And he he likes to get his story out, true or not. So he will at some point likely say something and use this as a media opportunity, I think, to further uh, get his base riled up and calling for protests. And, and frankly, these, these protests he's calling for in New York City, the NYPD uh, has a long history of knowing how to handle mass protests, whether they are peaceful or not peaceful. I have no doubt that they will handle this and handle this expertly and keep people safe. But Donald Trump thinks that he, you know, can mess with the criminal justice system in some way. And that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to make it so that things happen differently for him. And I think that's like Trump sees that and he's worried for a couple reasons. One, it's real. These are like real deal legal experts nailing down not just a hypothetical, but like a roadmap of like the next 48 hours, let's say. Trump still says it's a Tuesday arrest. Um, some people are saying it's going to be Wednesday, uh, maybe even late tonight, who knows, but it's the next 48, 72 hours and, and it's got to be putting a pit in the stomach, right? He sees this happening. There's no way around it. It's going to go down. They're talking specific charges. And as noted, while there is concern about the violence, their people are ready for it. And so Trump has to think to himself, not even my thugs, are, are, they might not, be, might not even be able to get me out of this. The thugs might not be able to save me. They could try, but it's just going to be a bunch of Ashley Babbitts and I'm still getting indicted, right? That's what, that's what might happen. And here's where the doctor comes in. And this is very interesting because this is a doctor of psychology that knows Donald Trump very well. And while this person still isn't 100% convinced that this is the end of old Donnie, she's much closer than she's ever been. You are not just Donald Trump's niece. You're also a psychologist. You saw your uncle's truth post his angry all cap social media post about an imminent arrest were those the words of a defiant man a cornered man a desperate man well i think with donald it's always all three uh, and let's be clear here 
it's the same play he runs because it works. This is a person does understand on some level that he is getting closer and closer to some sort of accountability. He probably doesn't believe it entirely because it's never happened before. But he knows that if he makes his grievance, the grievance of the mob, right? Yeah. If he makes a rule of law against, holding him accountable, a crime against real Americans, then we might be in for some trouble here. I mean, I think that Donald has shown himself when push comes to shove to be quite pragmatic. Like he didn't stay in the Oval Office after he lost the election. He left. His only punishment (laughs) to Joe Biden was not to attend the inauguration. So he knows when he needs to cede certain ground. But that's because he has millions of people who will do his bidding. And it is not an accident that he is already preempting reactions by calling for protests. We saw this this happen before. We're going to see it happen again. And it is cause uh, for quite concern. Yeah. That's Mary Trump, Dr. Mary Trump, who uh, understands Donald Trump's psychology, as noted from the start there. The premise of the interview is they don't just bring her on because... She is Mary Trump, uh, Trump's niece, but because she is a doctor of psychology and understands this. And what she's saying is Donald Trump often gets away with things and he often gets away with them by doing the things he's doing. But for the first time ever, he's starting to face consequences. And critically, he's starting to realize that he's facing those consequences. And so we shouldn't rest on our laurels and shouldn't be, you know, um, you know, uh, co- uh, you're complacent. We should understand that this is a close, close thing happening. And Donald Trump is a sick man who's only getting sicker. Everything here, his movement turning on him, his thugs won't be able to save him, getting devastating updates from doctors who understand him very well. All bad news right before he gets arrested, too.